Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the difference between a TV camera, an infrared camera, a low light TV camera, and of course a forward looking infrared camera. Now it's one of those things where you're like, wow, those are all things that I've, I've seen and used and pretty much more or less interchangeably and I really give much thought about it. But believe it or not, there is quite a bit of difference between the different systems, which is why we're going to kind of put together a little bit of a demonstration for you today. So you can actually see side by side what the different systems actually do. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab my little small building with observer here kind of reach inside here, add a sensor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin by defining myself a pretty simple zipper zipper. We're going to grab a television camera, a TV camera, and we're going to go ahead and get the most recent greatest version of it that we have. So we're going to grab a generic TV camera of the third generation surveillance variety. And I'm going to go ahead and slam that sucker on there. Now, this is just a standard TV camera. There's nothing special about it. It's just visual. Keep in mind, it's like one o'clock in the afternoon. Aha! So it looks to me like we've detected a new contact here. It's a bogey number one. We can see that we got it with the generic TV camera, 50 degrees at 28 nautical miles. We actually picked it up by its contrail, which is actually fairly accurate. That actually did a nice job there. Fantastic. So let's go ahead and uh, reset everything real quickly here. I'm going to go set it back to blue team. Grab my handy dandy little building one more time. I have a little IR camera. Go ahead and change that real quickly here. I'll go ahead and filter it again. And this time we're going to do IR camera. And we're going to keep it, like I said, pretty simple. We're going to grab ourselves a third generation. Now, an infrared camera detects a target by heat as opposed to detecting a target by a visible light. So you're going to be picking up a very different part of the spectrum. So one of the things you'll notice here is our range was substantially reduced. Uh, many people think, oh, just because you have a fancy infrared camera means you can see things at longer distances. And uh, one of the things you'll observe is we identify the target not by its contrail, but we identify the target by its physical existence. So you'll notice here that we did not see its contrail. We actually saw the building itself. So that's uh, one of the first uh, building. We're the building, uh, the aircraft itself, because uh, we lose that when we were looking through an infrared camera. So let's go ahead and reset everything again. Now you're starting to see a little trend here. So let's uh, get that one all set up already. You're starting to go, aha, uh -huh, I'm starting, I get it. I, I, get where, I know where you're going with this. I know where you're going. So let's go ahead and get a different one too. Uh, we're going to this time get a LLTV, a little light television. And this one's a pretty handy. These are your night vision devices. It's kind of a thing. Grab my uh, third generation surveillance, toss that on the top. And you're probably sitting here going, is it at one o'clock in the afternoon? Isn't it a bad idea to be using LLTV? As a matter of fact, if you saw when we uh, captured that guy, um, far, sorry, hit space so fast there. You will see we picked it up at the same distance as the regular camera. So it actually had a pretty solid benefit to it. So um, we have the benefit of nighttime, as well as having the benefit of being able to see things like contrails. Okay, so now let's throw in LLTV, which everybody thinks, or not LLTV, I should say, FLIR, forward-looking infrared. Now, when people think of FLIR, of course, um, you're thinking the magical technology that lets us see everything all the time, and it's just a wonderful, wonderful tool because it's, you know, awesome. So watch what happens. There we go. You'll notice we picked them up once again at half the distance we did with our cameras. Starting to see how this gets a little more complicated than people thought it did, which is one of the reasons I really, really enjoy things like this, because it just kind of uh, dispels the myth, so to speak. So let's go ahead and reset here. As you'll notice, our two cameras were actually the best at detecting targets at long range that are in the air because of the presence of contrails. See how that gets sneaky? So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and change the time of day here. It was originally 9.30. Uh, let's see, local time is about 13.30. So if we go up to, say, 15 o'clock, <laughs> that sounds very awkward. Go to 15 o'clock, uh, that puts us to 7. That's actually not late enough. Uh, we need to go a lot later than that. Let's do uh, 21 o'clock. I think that'll be a good time. Let's go ahead and say, okay, there. That puts us at 1 in the morning. Obviously, uh, it's considered on uh, because of the time of year. So uh, that's one of the problems here. So we're actually going to have to tweak this a little bit. So let's get away from this and we'll do, um, yeah, we'll do uh, 0101, something like that for us. Okay, copy time and date. So that should make it a little bit darker. Yeah, that's like super duper ultra super dark. We'll go ahead and uh, save this one real quickly. So let's go ahead and grab our original camera here. We have a generic IR camera just kind of chilling in there. So we're going to get our TV camera. And I think you know what's going to happen here when we try the generic TV camera. You're going to sit here and go, oh boy, he's going to fly right by and you're never going to notice him. Well, let's find out. Ta-da! We actually picked him up at 10 nautical miles. Very large contrail detected. Interesting, right? So as you can see, um, TV cameras aren't useless during the day. They're actually still fairly effective at picking targets up. Granted, that's a much, much, much shorter distance than the 26 miles we got earlier. So let's go ahead and open it up one more time here. Again, I'm keeping to the theme. Let's grab our sensors one more, well, not one more time, a few more times. Let's go ahead and throw on the IR camera this time. Now the IR camera, again, a little different technology than uh, you're thinking when you're thinking of uh, traditional uh, forward-looking infrared. Like I said, slightly different wavelengths that we're dealing with. So watch what happens this time. 
You'll notice we picked them up at the precise the same distance, almost to the 0.1 nautical mile there, that we did the first time, which makes perfect sense. So our infrared camera now, as you'll notice, is not picking up the contrail. However, it is able to see at night. I should probably build a little chart that goes along with this. That'll probably make more sense, but hey, this is the fun way to do it, right? So let's go ahead and get our LLTV here. This is our low light television technology here. Grab that sucker real quickly there, and this is going to be the one that always puts a smile on my face you'll see that we picked them up at 27 nautical miles. That is the same range we picked them up during the day, if you remember, it, with our bigger regular camera here, which again, the low light television has a really fantastic capability of being able to see things like contrails at those really long distances. So now we're gonna get the, the king of them all, you know, the one that everybody's like, oh, this is the one I wanna have the most of, which of course is gonna be our LLTV. Now the LLTV, not LLTV, I'm sorry, I did it for the second time. Our FLIR, of course, is really, really, really useful, except, again, it's going to have that same limitation that we saw before. So let's grab this one real quick. Pop that one on, go ahead and push this. Uh, wait, uh, let's see here. If I had to guess, probably about 16. Let's see what happens. Oh, I'm so good. Interesting. So what can we take away from this? Well, you can actually take away a lot of things. So the first things first is don't throw away your cameras and low light television cameras because they can see contrails at distances that our infrared camera buddies cannot see. Uh, the second thing you probably notice is at nighttime, our camera wasn't completely useless. It actually was okay. Now, the last thing we're gonna take a look at here, of course, is we're gonna make things a little bit tricky. So let's go ahead and uh, grab our blue here. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this guy one more time. I'm gonna go to my sensors window, I'll go ahead and remove that camera. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in everything that we've seen so far today. So let's go ahead, uh, third gen. I think you just type in third gen like that. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna throw in a FLIR. We're gonna skip the gun directors. Uh, they don't do anything for us here for today. We don't have any guns to direct. They also tend to have a very, very strong zoom. That's kind of cheating. Let's grab ourselves an LLTV, and let's grab ourselves a generic TV here. And again, these are all surveillance devices. So what we're going to do now is we're going to crank on the weather. And I'll go up to the weather real quickly here. Uh, weather, let's go ahead. I'm not going to put any clouds on because we're not going to be able to see it at all. Let's go ahead and jack up the rain. So that gets us a heavy rain. Heavy rain is uh, messy. Uh, current time in the morning, of course, is 1 o'clock in the morning. So let's go ahead and unpause. Let's see what happens. There we are. Whoa. <laughs> I was way too fast for that. Give me a second. All right, this time I promise I'll go a little bit slower. So let's go ahead and grab the weather here. So I'll go ahead and set this back to our heavy rain. Oh, again, we don't really have any specific clouds here. We're going to keep it simple. We're just going to go to 15x here. Now, place a bet. Which one of our four sensors, remember LLTV, TV, FLIR, and IR, are going to detect our bomber first? Now this is, uh, everybody's sitting there going, oh, no, my, my money is on LLTV. No, no, my money is on FLIR. And everybody's sitting there going, oh, which one's it gonna be? Which one's it gonna be? Cause um, we'll find out in a few seconds here as the bomber flies over. And as you'll see, the generic LLTV was our winner. And they detected it via a very large contrail. See how that gets sneaky? So of course you're sitting there going, oh, that's ridiculous. That doesn't make any sense. How are we able to see it? What if you shut the contrail off? Okay, oh, you said shut the contrail off. I'm, I'm gonna shut the, go ahead and uh, shut that sucker off. Let's grab my bice in here and uh, let's go ahead and uh, drop him down to medium altitude. And um, like I said, this is, we're eliminating this aspect of our little mystery here so that you can have a pretty good understanding of what's going on. Edit unit properties, uh, what do we say? 12, whoa, ho, 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 ho. 12,000 feet, so I'm gonna do that. Close, unpause. Uh, 45,000 feet, I guess I did not right click that correctly. That's yeah, something I do every time. All right, altitude 12,000, enter key. I, it, I did do, yeah, there we go, there we go, fantastic. All right, let's swing back over to our other one. Well, we've uh, hidden them here so we can go ahead and see what happens. Again, he's flying through the heavy rain, and there we are. As you will see, we picked up no contrail. However, the LLTV, our low light television, is the champion again, being able to see through all of it and seeing it, even though you expected the infrared camera to be sort of the magical tool. Now, there's something you have to know about these sensors, uh, one of those things that people kind of miss. So let's go up to the database real quick here. Let's go up to aircraft, we the sensors. I'll type in LLTV. Everybody's like, this is the winner. This is the magic one. This is the one I have to mount on everybody from now on. So one of the things you'll notice here is my generic LLTV has a max range of 30 nautical miles. It's got a bunch of useful things here, night vision capability, all this other really, really, really useful things. Watch this. Let's see, da, 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 da. we'll go down to generic flare. Of course, it appreciated. You'll observe they actually have a better maximum range. 
I knew you were saying, oh, there's probably something here, like you're not zooming in enough or something like that. You can actually see here that my infrared zoom detection classification is 20 here, and my maximum range here is 45 miles. There's no uh, limit as far as um, I have to, I can't identify out to a certain distance or anything like that. So of course, when we did our LLTV, which is our magic, remember the number 20? Remember the number 20? 45, 20, 45, 20, 45, 20, 45, 20. You'll see here, it is also 20, it is 30. So that is just one of those interesting little things that um, people kind of miss. And of course, if you just wanted to do a generic TV camera here, just confirm that we're not cheating. Remember how good the generic TV camera was most of this time here. Surveillance, you'll see it is exactly the same. The only difference being that our low light buddy can see in the dark. So what do you want to use for a sensor when you don't want people to know that you're looking? Your LLTV is the way to go. Fleur works great, of course, for lots of other things. But LLTV has all those added little fun little benefits. Enjoy.